We're here because in a week the House of Representatives will vote on the 20-week pain capable bill. Not long after that, the Senate will vote on it. Um, the difference between this time and last time we voted on this bill are twofold. One is that we have a Senate, a uh, big Senate election coming up in 2018, and the senators and the congressmen that are voting against this bill are really going to be answering for it at the door when our uh, canvassers come and talk to them, uh, come and and uh, make sure that the uh, that constituents know what's going on. In other words. This will be a big issue in the 2018 Senate elections. The other thing that is different this time is that the President of the United States, who I talked with last night at the White House about this, considers it a high priority. And then I noticed you have a little boy, Micah, here, who represents, he was born at 20 weeks and I was five, and he represents babies that can survive after being born at 20 weeks. Could you talk a little bit more about him as an example and if there are other children out there like him? Well, Micah really is the, the, the real face of this issue, because it's really easy to talk about it, the, the abortion issue in abstract theoretical terms, but you, when, when you really have come across and met and see a young man running around uh, full of energy and love, you realize this is not any other political issue. The 20-week bill actually is generally pre-viability, before children are able to live outside the womb. So viability as a, as a, as a argument is um, is lacking in compassion when you see that just like a week before Micah's birth, um, he could have been legally aborted. I have really found over the last several years of dealing especially with this 20-week bill that the media in general are listening, that they're not leading with bias generally. I mean, there are obviously exceptions. Um, but because this really appeals to the basic humanity of people, I'm not saying they're on our side or they're agreeing, but I think when the that when they're faced with this issue, they at least get it. Sometimes they don't even get our issues, but they at least get it. Um, the only way that media bias could really kill this is by not reporting it at all, which which is of course one tactic that happens a lot. That that would be something of concern. But I'm finding mainstream outlets with reporters that. They understand why it resonates. They basically, you know, get most of the arguments out. And uh, and frankly, without the pressure of, of really good outlets, um, I don't think that would have happened.